Emperor Tolly II was on its toes. He knew a lot about court intrigue, but now it was getting real. He was the emperor now, and he wanted now celibate and uh, chaste. He wanted to do something for his descendants, for the empire. He wanted, he had a dream. He had a dream of absolute power and of the imperial administration. And that's why he had already started to buy favors. The question is, would they accept the favors? And the question is, how long would he live? He had cancer, has had cancer for quite some years. It's a mild illness, but still, he couldn't expect to die any time. He's on a counter. Tick, tick, tick. The clock ticks, well, maybe at this time, the first clocks or at least the first bells might sound. The question is, do we have bells here as Germanic people or do we have a gong? We don't know. No one knows, but we will need to seek treatment for our illness again. Maybe, maybe we can do something about cancer. It's unlikely that we can do something that will save us ultimately for a while because we're a craven. But other than that, hmm, a lot is possible, a lot is thinkable. And um, a lot is also thinkable for us and getting married. And that's something we should also look at. We need someone who's representative, who is a tribalist maybe, so we understand each other well. Someone who really likes us and that we like as well. For example, here we have Holmfrid Stoller's dot here. She doesn't need to be able to bear children because we have already children. And uh, yeah, she does, just needs to be representative and maybe good at diplomacy. Hmm, a possessed woman wouldn't be good. This woman is... Mm, no. Alva. We would think her to be good. She's content, she's trusting, she's temperate, she's diplomatic and brave. That might be a good choice. Alva. Margarete. How about Ingeborg? She's also content, gregarious, erudite, temperate. Yeah, that's someone we could uh, really, really think of. Margarete. She's a little cynical. I mean... Beoth win is something that we someone who whom we would really like but hmm I think Alva is maybe the best choice she, she seems to be good for the people and that's representative enough for us so let's go for a marriage we'll lose some prestige but meh it doesn't matter. What? Surrender to the Jumps Vikings? No, no, no. There's that. Now let's start time and see if our endeavors are successful. Oh, King Helgi of Nordoriki has inherited the Kingdom of Nordoriki and other titles from King Sterla the Cruel and of Nordoriki. Indeed, my lord, something has been found in the library. A scribe catches up with me. An old book from Emperor Tolia. When I join him for a closer inspection, I have to agree with the assessment. Old oh, indeed, I sneeze. Should have someone care for it, the scribe suggests. Um, the Norse Language, Volume 3. And that is a very good book, so money is not an issue here. I think we have just also we have looked at uh, 
all the artifacts already. And yeah, we have been looking at the art of war. And there's just a lot we could we could read or do. We yeah, are modest measures. That's definitely a good choices we made there. May you live in harmony. I graciously accept your gift and will remember your good intentions in the future. That's perfect. So we have the seer. We have Gita the Cruel. And our court physician has come. As long as you know what you're doing. Then we have Sterla who accepted the gift. And we have Magni who accepted the gift. And we are marrying Athela. We can collect a royal aid duty. We should concentrate on her. She's... Uh, she will be good for the Empire as well. What's there? She's out of patience. And collect a royal aid duty to pay for the ceremonies. Yeah, and we'll do that because we don't care about uh, prestige that much. We care about what we can do. We don't care about diplomacy and stuff. So let's see. Um, we have a couple of favors that we can call in. Because I think we have favors from these people. Um, what? I feel it would not be in the best interests for Emperor Tolia to marry Alva. So are we not married? Yeah, uh, okay, yeah. We had Alva before that, but now we have Athena. It's fine. She's also good. Quick, groomed, patient, brave, temperate. Yeah, we had chosen her before. Duke Vargan entered your chambers with an earthen wear jaw, cradled in his arms and came to sit by your bed. He pulled a leech from the jar and gave it a most tender look before carefully placing it around your face. Remain still, my lord. Better not disturb. They're feeding. I actually feel better. We have a successful treatment, which means we'll live for a while, maybe. We have five years to live. And Enda also accepts our gift. That's perfect. Now, we can call in council support. We Could we do that from Sigbjörn? We could do it. We will owe him a favor. We could do it right here, right now without owing a favor, and that's very important, as we already know. Let's have a look at that. Here we go, and now we're ready. Go one step more for absolute rule. Everyone said yes, it's fine. We're through with this. The first the first round of bribing has uh, begun. And this is gonna be quite good. Now the the, the disadvantage is we cannot stop them anymore. Um, and uh, yeah, that's something as well. Look at that. We have our kinsman, the Jarl of Livonia, who is a threat to us. Hmm. Strange. Now, will we join someone? Would we join the Fellowship of Hell? We're chaste, we're ambitious, we're a wrath, we're living in celibate got cancer maybe we would see it as something that could be hmm a big advantage for us we could show interest in the assassins hmm that's something or the fellowship of hell 
Now the fellowship of hell is about corrupting society. The assassins are true followers of Allah and uh, will further the advances of Shia Islam. That's kind of odd. The fellowship of hell or a secret society devoted to the study of dark sorcery and the veneration of the hell, the giantess ruler of Helheim. Members believe in the power of destruction, will attempt to use dark magic to sate their greed and thirst for death. At Ragnarok they hope to join the forces of Hell and Loki in the fight against the other gods. Could we, would we do that? It seems quite possible to me. So we'll show interest in the Fellowship of Hell. The Fellowship of Hell should help us, help us, yeah, to form the Empire so that it will receive Imperial administration. We'll do anything and we might need the help of a big society behind it. We don't want to join the Wolf Warriors. Could do that as well, but we don't want to because we're a craven. That's not what we're going to do. Let's see what else can be done here. Could we hold a great blot? Not right now. That's a disadvantage, but um, the question is, should we change the pagan branch? Because as you can see, we're a tribalist. Dynasty opinion would be maybe important. We could go for another kind of faith. It's the question, right? We have all of our siblings are tribalists. And we would still be concentrated on our family. On doing the things we seem necessary so we deem necessary and so let's just continue and see the winds of change are blowing our people have abandoned some of our older traditions and the practice of raising rune stones is one that is no longer observed well it is here because we have the rune circle apparently the latest fad has people writing with ink on parchment and dwell on instead what will they think of next Well there, arrange with throttles between our sister and the Prince of Estonia. Hmm. Yeah. Why not? She's got some county claims, but what the? She's marrying someone who is dead now? Is that true? Slow fever in Holmgard. That's not good, but it's far away still. And we have raiders coming in here. I'm having dinner and plenty of drinks with Thegan Gunnar of Borovici tonight. It's lovely, yet what I'm most charmed by is Gunnar is himself. Why else would I not immediately stop our conversation? We just slowly begin to touch upon some almost heretical ideas, questioning the salvation of Odin. Hmm. I think it's a great discussion, fueled by alcohol or not. You would never question the authority of the Almighty. There's that. I mean, we're chaste. We're celibate. Which is probably because of faith. We should not speak of this. Because we're really focused on faith as well. So, um, so the fellowship of hell for us would be the means to an end. Um, on the other hand, questioning the salvation of Odin would not question Odin himself. Why did Odin make us curious? So 
So we'll just go one little step further into a direction. Walking the palisades of my palace, I'm joined by Thank Gunnar. I find myself agreeing with a lot of the concepts he presents. The futility of prayer particularly resonates with me. Suddenly he turns to me and presses a small leather pouch into my hand. My lord, will you carry this with you for your protection? What is this? I should call you a saint mother. Yeah, that's a practice of dark sorcery, yes, I think. But no, we'll, we're open-minded. I'll keep it hidden and thank you, Gunnar. If I told you that all you've been taught to believe is a lie, Gunnar continues, throwing a cautious glance around us before pulling up his sleeve, revealing a scar in the shape of Hell's mark. Odin is a liar. Reject the tyrant deity and let Hell guide your steps. Yeah, and it is likely that we would seek treatment for the disease as we have something that we still want to do. We're ambitious. Truly a saint mother, then can you rid me of this disease? We might. If you offer yourself up to hell, you will be granted powers Odin has kept from us humans. Fingering the leather pouch in my pocket, I slowly nod. Oh, and I think you'll enjoy it, he said with a knowing smile. If there's any chance it will rid me of this disease, I will. Then Gunnar leaves you alone for now, the Kogun will be in contact with you. Prince Harry <laughs> needs an education focus. <laughs> yeah, Prince Harry, of course, Prince Harry. What will do him good? Where is he talented in? Stewardship? Not so much. Would be in his character. Stewardship or intrigue? Well, we are we are more intrigue fascinated, so we'll we'll give him we'll say to him. Intrigue is absolutely intriguing, my son. And there's a lot here, but we cannot do much about that. We cannot transfer many vessels. Well, we could transfer our son as a vessel, but we'll only do that once he is uh, an adult, because then we can do many things for him. We could give him a gift, um, on the other hand. An artifact, let's see. Mm. Yeah, or just the crown of the sea. That is something he can use already. He can negotiate with Gedalka, but he will get nothing from us. Metal pad. That's ours as well. Oh, interesting. So we kind of have a reserve count here. Young Magni is showing strong tendencies towards prideful behavior. What do we think of prideful behavior? We're not humble. Hmm. We're ambitious. Uh, it's fine. I don't need more competition. So that would make him proud and lose him haughty. No, we, we would love our son to be ambitious. He should show more ambition. Your father, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. I accept your gracious gift. What a splendid object. Yeah, he's got the crown now. And it's fine. Could imprison someone. Well, not anymore. Okay. There's been some time since Thank Gunnar was in contact with me. I've been pondering what Odin would think of me for venturing down this path, but Gunnar has already offered me more support than Odin ever has. I've begun studying books on the occult, and so far I'm finding the youth preached at the temple to be narrow minded at best. Hmm. I'm beginning to feel that I've been missing out. Why must we always put the needs of others before our own? We would become greedy? That would be possible. 
be not chased anymore would also be possible for him definitely and the first thing would also be something but it would be yeah maybe untasty yeah, it could be that we change for that and we'll we'll do that we'll basically flip a coin so if i if i roll a one three and so on we'll go for uh, removing the chased trait and with two four and so on I become greedy well this was a 16 so let's always put the needs of others before our own greedy now less diplomacy well uh, yeah <laughs> i've gained a greedy trait definitely greedy 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 I found some cryptic scrollings written in blood on my bedroom door this morning. The guards say they haven't seen anyone enter during the night and dare not ask my seer to decipher it. Yet I think I understand the mark of hell. Um. Of course, the bargain must be struck. Yeah, we must we must heal ourselves from this to be able to influence something. A mild injury. For a month. The dimension is too big. Oh! What's happened now? Emperor Tolia of Nenezia, I write you this letter to inform you that me and my men have officially left your service. We no longer see you fit to rule. We have once more returned to the faithful service of Odin. We have lost the Doms Vikings. Cursed zealots. What have they found out about us? What have they found as well? Um, we have gained a lot of territory still, and uh, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. And we, we should give uh, one of our, one of our kids, or maybe just Magni. Metal pad. Here we go. Let's grant him a landed title of Metal Pad. See a swain burst into your chambers flanked by several warriors dragging Godi Erstein of St. Michel with them in chains. My Emperor, there are many concerned peasants claiming that their children are plagued by nightmares of this man. He's obviously a warlock. What shall be done with him? Hmm. That is a mastermind theologian, right? He's possessed, a lunatic, he's lustful. Um. Yeah, we should stop this, but let's let's mark him. Let's brand him. So no one knows. Uh, we can proselytize. Why should we do that? Maybe we'll research cultural tech. Bjarnia. Here we go. Brother Tolia, we have received word of your dedication and desire to join the religion of the true lord. Await the messenger. He, he already looks like the emperor. Let the dark one guide you. Signed, Saint Mother Ludwig, finally. I've seen the messenger. Met an intriguing and hypnotically beautiful woman at court. Apparently this Mathilde is a foreign diplomat. I engaged her in conversation for the first time today and we spoke at length about tax levels. <laughs> I was shocked when she carefully pulled up her sleeve, revealing the mark of hell. You're the messenger? Speaking to me about tax levels? The, sp the Spacona smiles. I'm pleased to find you not only a charming man, Tolia, yeah, with zero diplomacy, but also one capable of intellectual discourse. 
The brethren value the pursuit of knowledge, you see, in addition to more earthly pursuits, her smile turns into a predatory grin. She continues, we'll soon see exactly how committed you are. What, uh, what do you need me to do? The field escorts me to my bedchamber. I hesitated upon entering, finding it flooded with light. The candles form a circle around my bed. Several hooded figures surround the room, chanting in unison. Fear not, brother. Power and pleasure. These are the gifts of hell. Um, we'll go down this path for our ambition. I like the sound of that. Um, we're prepared already with intrigue focus to do anything anything for more power for the empire when i wake up the cloaked figures are gone and mathilde is lying next to me a smile tugging at the corner of her mouth welcome to the fellowship of hell emperor tolia the second she says i hold her clothes wondering how i will look back at this moment yeah because we're celibate <laughs> we haven't done anything <laughs> Um, what do we think of her? We like her as much as our wife. Um, a necessary evil? Mm, on the other hand, we find this woman quite in enjoyable. So, she has helped us. On a path, it's a necessary evil, but I wish you had found me sooner. And um, we'll definitely invite her to court. We can hold a great blot too. We'll see about that. We'll do that, of course, as well. Summon all the vassals and see what we can do with them. Peace be with you. I accept your gracious invitation and will join your court forthwith. And, um, of course, we will take her as a concubine. Absolutely. And then we'll have a private conversation with her. She's our advisor. What's happened here? Look at that. The monthly balance is 77. The guests have arrived at... The time has come for the blood to begin. You gather outside the temple and start by offering animals to s a sacrifice to the gods, especially hell. Blood is sprinkled on statues of Odin, Thor, Freya and the other gods, as well as on the worshippers themselves. Now for the human sacrifice. And uh, Mathilde accepted my invitation to meet in the seclusion of the sacred grove. After some time talking, we could slay her. Goodness. <laughs> we would probably win, but... Um, We'll know each other a little better. Freya died. Young Astrid, our kinsman, has finished her education in diplomacy. She's learned all the skills required. Oh, okay. Who are you? Very good, though. Very good. As you have no prisoners languishing in your dungeons that are suitable for the sacrifice of the blood, you are forced to make do with some randomly purchased thralls. They are brought to the big oak outside the temple, and soon their limp and lifeless bodies are hanging from its thick branches. It's better than nothing. Yeah, it's actually cool to have some uh, sacrifices like this taken out of the populace. With the sacrifice over the feast at the end of the blood can now begin. The meat of the animals that were sacrificed has already been prepared. There's plenty of meat to go around at the celebrations begin. And when the celebrations begin, we will stop this episode for now. Thank you for watching and happy gaming to you. We'll see each other in the next episode. Without the Jumps Vikings, but with a lot more money and hopefully power. Have a great time until next time and happy gaming. This is Immanuel Khan, signing out. <laughs>